Welcome to a new video. Today we're taking a closer look at this capture card which was sent in for review by Cloner Alliance. This is their Flint 4K Plus model but they do sell other models as well so check out the links in the description to find out more and also watch this video till the end because I have a giveaway which might interest you. So let's talk a little bit about the specs of this capture card. It's 4K pass-through at 60 Hz, meaning that if you have a 4K signal from a camera or gaming console, you can pass that through the capture card to a 4K monitor without losing any quality. The interface is HDMI 2.0 for both the in and out pass-through. There is no HDR pass-through or capture and the capture specs are 1080p 60 frames per second maximum. It works on USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 via this uh, USB Type-C port but you really want to use it over USB 3 to get the best quality because I think over USB 2 it switches to MJPEG codec while on USB 3.0 it's a YUI 2 uncompressed video and uh, it does support other frame rates like 24 frames per second if you need that if you work uh, with cinematography stuff. Uh, this capture card is UVC compatible. UVC means USB video class. This USB class describes devices capable of streaming video and so it's universally compatible with pretty much any OS. It's plug and play and it will show up as a camera device on your system which makes it super simple to use even with the simplest Windows camera app. So my main use for this is going to be for microscope video camera capture but obviously you could use this for video game capture. You can hook it up to your Xbox or PlayStation, you can pass through uh, this signal through your monitor and capture the stream at the same time. You can connect a GoPro and capture video from that or your DSLR. It works. It will work with pretty much any HDMI video source. You could even connect this with a, a proper adapter cable to some smartphones that output HDMI over USB Type-C and you could even capture that. But why would anyone want to do that is beyond me. The manufacturer claims this has a super low latency but if you want to put a number on that it should be around 75-80 milliseconds. Of course your results may vary a bit depending on your configuration, the uh, USB port you are using but it should be ballpark figure around 80 milliseconds which is perfectly acceptable for most jobs but I wouldn't call it super low latency. This capture card does feature some flexibility when it comes to audio. It has line out, line in and microphone input and this can be useful in a variety of scenarios like if you're recording some video source but you would like to add your voice over that like uh, gamers do sometimes. You can plug in a mic and do that but just know that under Windows you do not get separate audio devices created for each one of these interfaces. There is however a software that you can download for this capture card and that will allow you to mix and control the volume for these three audio interfaces uh, within that software uh, before being mixed into a single audio device which is uh, shown under Windows. The build quality is super nice on this. It looks like it's anodized aluminum panels combined with uh, some kind of steel frame around. Uh, there are no visible screws and everything fits together really nice and tight on this enclosure. It does feature some ventilation holes on the side which will help keep the temperature under control unlike uh, other cheaper capture cards which have a fully enclosed case and so they do get pretty hot. Inside the box uh, you get a bunch of uh, USB Type-C adapters like USB Type-A to USB Type-C another one which has the USB Type-A uh, plug uh, it's uh, blue to signal it's USB 3.0 and one of these uh, pass-through connections uh, a USB Type-C cable this is uh, I'm assuming half a meter and an HDMI cable which once again it's half a meter or one meter long so you're pretty much ready to use this in any kind of scenario. You have the option of downloading a custom software from Cloner Alliance for recording on your PC. In my case for the stuff I do OBS and the Windows camera app are doing a pretty decent job but I'm sure those who do more advanced work 
will kind of need better software. Now to put this to a test, I connected as per my usual setup, HDMI output from my microscope camera, which is 1080p at 60 frames per second, to the input port of the capture card, the output port, the pass-through goes to my monitor, and the capture card is connected to an USB 3.0 port on the back of my computer. As expected, the capture card is detected plug and play and shows up uh, as a camera device, which you can immediately access with a built-in Windows camera app. I did experience some glitches at first because I had the capture card plugged into one of the front panel USB 3 ports on my desktop PC and your mileage may vary with that depending on the quality on your front panel ports but if you are experiencing any glitches just switch to one of the built-in USB ports on the back of your computer. I'm not gonna be running any more tests with this. I don't have any USB Type-C smartphone type devices that can output video so I can test with those. I don't have any 4K monitors or cameras so I'm not gonna test that 4K pass-through either but I have seen other people on YouTube testing it and it matches the specs so there is no reason to doubt that. While using this card to capture video the case does get warm but not as hot as with my cheap capture card so it's probably using different hardware in here and they're managing heat in a better way with these ventilation holes but still don't be worried if you see the case is getting warm that is normal. Unfortunately, as you probably learned from my YouTube community post a week ago, I kind of broke my FLIR 1 thermal camera, so I won't be able to take any thermal images for a while. Next, you probably want to take a look inside this unit and see how the hardware is different from one of the cheap units that you can get on AliExpress. There are no obvious uh, screws present on this case, so it's either some uh, clips holding these uh, red panels clipped into the black frame or there is some screw hidden under, the, under this label. So the first thing I'm going to try is to heat up this with a hair dryer and remove this white label to see if there is any hidden screw behind this. After poking at this with various sharp objects, I realized these panels are glued and there are screws hidden behind them. So I heated the whole surface to soften the glue and then with a very thin razor scraper, I separated the two panels enough to be able to slip a bigger metal spudger in there and I finally managed to pull these apart without any damage. Uh, I must admit, this is a pretty nice construction type. Inside of this we are greeted with a uh, red PCB which has this uh, big package that stands out with its markings uh, lasered off. There are some thick silicon pads helping conduct the heat away to the top surface but at that thickness I'm sure they don't do so well. And whenever I see this type of uh, big uh, package. I think about Realtek because they used to have many chips in this uh, rectangular QFP style of package. Next to the audio ports we have the Sirius Logic uh, WM8960 stereo codec. They didn't think this is important enough to rub the numbers off. In fact this is the only chip with the numbers rubbed off. And next to the USB port um, we have the e-tron EJ179V which is a USB type-c controller and switch. The chip next to the HDMI ports is marked CH6001FN. I couldn't find any info on this one but it's likely an HDMI switch with pass-through capability. And we have about three different flash memory chips in this area. On the back of the PCB we have another e-tron chip and this one is the EJ511 which is an USB 3.0 capture I see supporting 1080p at 60 frames per second. I was kind of expecting the big chip with the rubbed off numbers to do that but no it's uh, this little guy which is uh, capturing video and transferring over USB. However this guy takes an RGB or I2S video input and so I believe the big chip here with rubbed up numbers just does the conversion from HDMI to RGB which is then passed to this chip uh, to do the capturing. And another interesting thing I noticed on this uh, board is uh, we have a date code here of 2019 August 
so this is about uh, two years old this design is about two years old and the name of the board uh, YK932B I did a bit of searching on this and I think I found the OEM for this capture card so if you buy a large enough quantity you can probably get the OEM to customize uh, the case uh, as Cloner Alliance did with this uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be happy with me showing this information but hey it's the type of channel I'm running here so I'm not gonna change the the rules for anyone overall the build quality on this uh, board is super nice we have gold plating uh, the soldering is top quality uh, there are only surface mount components on here well except for uh, a few pads on the connectors so I would say this is a uh, high build quality I've put everything back together and now I would like to announce the giveaway when Cloner Alliance contacted me about doing a review of this capture card I asked, I asked them to send two of them so I can give one away to the people that support me on Patreon so if you've been a Patreon supporter of the channel before this video was published leave a comment on the patreon post for this video saying you want this capture card and it's yours the first one to leave such a comment on patreon will get the capture card this capture card sells for 175 on amazon and yes that is expensive but i think it might make sense for some people to purchase this first of all you can get it from amazon warehouses it's in stock which means fast delivery even i got it in romania in one week but i'm sure other parts of the world will get it faster than that the second advantage is of uh, customer support because if you purchase a capture card from aliexpress you are on your own so if you're that kind of customer that knows he's going to need support this might make sense for you to get cloner alliance has great customer support and i've been in contact with them for the uh, purpose of this uh, review and i really like what they're offering and finally the build quality and specs of this unit are superior to the 50 dollar capture cards that you can get on aliexpress you've seen the hardware inside there is a lot more hardware in this one and it looks better built than the other chip capture card i reviewed this uh, has better uh, thermal management and it has that 4k pass through which i'm sure is important for some of you let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to check out the links for this product on amazon which i will place in the description below thank you for watching this video please consider supporting the channel on patreon you will get early access to videos behind the scene videos and sometimes access to giveaways like this one hit that like button and i will see you next time